Now let's look at meiosis and understand all of the different stages and steps and that will help us understand why there's so much diversity at the end of meiosis. Meiosis can largely be broken up into two different stages. There's meiosis 1 and there's meiosis 2. Each one of these stages results in a, a cell division. So meiosis 1 ends in the cell division and then each one of those cells divides again in meiosis 2. So while at the end of mitosis we ended up with two cells from one cell, at the end of meiosis we actually end up with four cells from one cell. Let's look at meiosis 1 first and then we'll look at meiosis 2. Meiosis 1 again begins with a cell in interphase. In interphase the cell has uncondensed chromosomes, it still has a nuclear envelope, the centrosomes have duplicated and the chromosomes have duplicated but they haven't condensed yet. So in prophase 1 the chromosomes and the chromatin condense since they're duplicated those chromosomes make that familiar X that's connected at the centromere and we can see that the centrosomes begin to move to either side of the cell and you can see that these spindle fibers start to form. During prophase homologous chromosomes begin to pair up. You can also see that the nuclear envelope begins to dissolve. An easy way to remember what happens in prophase is that the P in prophase can also be thought of as the P in the word pack. This is when the chromatin is packed into chromosomes. And this is a very early stage in meiosis. In the next stage in meiosis, we have metaphase 1. Now we have the chromosomes, the, the homologs have joined together in the middle of the cell. But there's a difference here than in mitosis. In mitosis, the pairs lined up so that when they separated, each side of the cell would get exactly the same set of chromosomes. In this case, the homologous chromosomes, remember they have different information, but they have the same kind of loci and genes on them. The homologs line up in a way where when they're separated, one side of the cell will get either one pair of homologs or the other pair of homologs. This is different than splitting each homolog where each side of the cell would get a copy of each homolog. So another way of saying that that references this diagram is in this diagram you can see that there's a blue pair of, of chromosomes and a red pair of chromosomes. Well the way that these chromosomes are lined up in metaphase 1, when the centrosomes and the spindle fibers pull these chromosomes apart, each side of the cell is either going to get red or it's going to get blue. That's different than mitosis where each, uh, each side of the cell would get a blue and a red. So they would all end up with each a blue and a red. Well here you're getting either blue or you're getting red. You're either getting a pair of the paternal chromosomes or you're getting a pair of the maternal chromosomes. But you're not getting a split of each. So this is a really important stage and a, a key difference between mitosis and meiosis. So the homologs line up in this different way and the spindle fibers have formed and we can see that in metaphase 1 that all of the chromosomes are kind of lined up in the middle. And another way of remembering this stage in, in metaphase is that the M in metaphase can be thought of as the M in the word meet. The chromosomes are meeting in the middle. The next stage in meiosis 1 is anaphase. In anaphase, the pair of homologous chromosomes split up and the sister chromatids, they remain attached. So we're not pooling them apart, we're just separating the homologs and each side of the cell will get either the maternal or the paternal pair of homologs. Another way to remember anaphase 1 is that the A in anaphase can be thought of as the A in the word apart. The chromosomes are taken apart, they're separated, they're pulled apart. The next stage in meiosis 1 is telophase 1 and cytokinesis. 
in this stage, the two haploid cells are formed and the chromosomes are they're still doubled. Just like in telophase and mitosis, we have a cleavage furrow develop and the two cells separate. And this process is called cytokinesis. At the end of meiosis one, we're left with two cells. They're haploid in the sense that they have only one set of genetic information, but those sets are doubled. So if you compare this stage with prophase one of meiosis, you can see that each side of the cell, each one of these cells, is either gonna have a red set or a blue set of each chromosome. Whereas in prophase one, we can see that this cell has both sets, a red and blue for each chromosome. So already we have a mixing up of the genetic information and these two cells at the end of meiosis one, they're not identical to each other you can look and one has a red chromosome with a, a, another blue chromosome and the other one has the opposite. You can also see that some of those chromosomes have parts of them that are different colors and we'll go into why that is later. Now let's look at meiosis two. And meiosis two will, will look a lot like mitosis. In prophase two, again, these cells are already condensed so they're no longer going to pack. But in prophase two, the centrosomes move to each side of the cell. We can see the spindle fibers start to develop. In metaphase two, we can see again the chromosomes line up, but th this time when they line up, they line up so that each side of each copy will be split and the, the genetic information will be divided up within the cell very evenly. In anaphase two, the sister chromatids are then separated and pulled to each side of the cell. And lastly, in telophase two, we have the division of the cells and we have cytokinesis where each cell is, is then separated and we have haploid daughter cells. So the end result of meiosis two are cells that only have one single copy of the genetic information that was present in the very beginning of meiosis. At this stage, these cells are haploid. They only have one copy of one chromosome. In our case, these would become gametes. These would either be sperm cells or egg cells.